Hi everybody and welcome to another Gardens and Crystals video with me, Wesley Peterson. Today I'm going to be repotting my Philodendron Pedantum and it is a huge, tall uh, vining plant. It's absolutely beautiful. I've already bought it very tall. So um, I bought a nice big pot. If you can see this, it's a beautiful kind of light blue colour and it's going to be living in this and around its bottom I'm going to be planting the neon pothos to give it another kind of colour around the bottom and also it's another way for me to be able to get many more plants into this indoor terrace garden. So to start with what I need to do is sort out the bottom, this is the bottom and because it's indoors, please make sure that you buy something that is glazed because if you use these terracotta pots, they're beautiful, but you need to have a glazed bottom if you're going to be putting it on a wooden uh, floor or a, a, a carpet or a mat because the water does seep out through those. Remember that they're fine for outside, but indoors you need to have a glazed bottom even if you're going to have an unglazed pot. But this pot is glazed all the way around, but it has a huge hold three huge holes in the bottom so I know that there will be uh, water drainage there's no chance of this plant being over watered it's going to be fine so also at the bottom of this pot it's really really rough so I'm just going to show you here what I'm going to do you can hear all the popping because I've got some crazy kind of uh, plastic going on to cover the mat today there's the bottom really rough so if you put this directly on your uh, wooden floor is going to scratch up your floor. So what I've been out and done is bought some of these soft pads Very easy and quick to fix on around the bottom to give you some soft um, Movement when you Woo! This print is really funny <laughs> um, So you don't scratch up the floor, you know, you've got some carpet underneath so you can also move around your pot easily once it's full of soil and a plant, it's going to be much heavier, okay? So, first of all, just going to fix this on, and I hope you're enjoying the popping sound at the same time. <laughs> it's all I had available, so that's what I'm using, you know? I'm an amateur, as I keep saying, I use what I've got around me. Oh my God, and what is all this dirt all over me? Yeah. Anyway, fix these on first. Now, there you go. You can see what I've done. That's all ready for me to put the pot on top now. Let's see which side I want to be the front at the same time, because once it's in place, you're not going to be able to move it around that much when it's that heavy. So the nicest looking side looks like this side. So I think I'll put that there. And then the pot. You also need to find the nicest looking side now then. That is the way it's going to look. Now, let's get putting some soil inside so that I can bring over the plant and get to the good stuff. Okay, now I've got my soil behind me here. I'm gonna go over and get the plant. This is the fun part, right? The plant. Um, actually, I'm gonna put the plant here, so I'm gonna to have to put some of the soil there. Okay, now I just went and got my Philodendron Pedantum. And it is an absolutely beautiful plant. It's got this dark kind of burgundy stalks where all these long leaves come out. I love getting my hands into the soil. No gloves. Get back to nature, people. Get back to the earth. Feel it in your fingers. Ugh. So I get some of this soil in, compact a little bit at the bottom, and then I'm going to start putting soil and perlite together. I'm using just a normal garden potting soil. This is rich. Um, in a lot of uh, nutrients and I think if I put plenty of perlite in it it will be fine enough just like that. You keep getting told that you should put all these different fantastic soils around these plants and a mixture of this and that and that. Yes you can do that but I'm telling you these plants will be just as good in potting soil that is a good quality not just some old cheapy stuff. A good quality potting soil mixed with perlite to make sure it stays aerated because this plant shouldn't get too clogged down with water and it shouldn't actually get too dry either. It should be just right um, so the perlite will help to aerate the soil. Look at 
loosening up any big chunks or whatever you might have in there as well at the same time. It's really good to do that. <coughs> Oof, get some of that dust and that pearl out of me. That's obviously not anything that's good for you, but uh, yeah, we'll be okay. Now, I just want to test how deep I need to go. Okay, that is at the top of the pot, so that's perfect. So I now know that I can actually put the plant in, as you see, um, and keep working more soil around the edge with perlite. So, what I'm going to do now is take the plant out of its nursing pot, and I hope it's not too pot bound so that it can easily be pulled out. Oh, sweet, I don't want to damage it. Oh, it's perfect. But, as I've shown you again in other videos, Look at those roots. They're really tightly bound on there. So what I'm gonna do is pull them out so that it has a chance to go straight down and in and around the new soil that it's got here. Because oh, these are really going around themselves, which is not good for the plant. And also back up again and do all sorts of trying to find their way out. Look at this, lots of big roots. So just help them out because that does help your plant to establish itself much better after it's got over the initial shock of, well, what I'm doing now. Look at these roots, look at the size of that. They're huge and they were just around each other. This plant, oh no, I've just broken a leaf or something. Um, this plant is going to be very thankful for this after a very short time because it's like, it's been freed again, you know? And it'll probably take off and grow like a maniac. Which is fine because I want some vining growing up the walls, as I said, in here. Uh, there, I think that's quite enough. Now I know that there are roots all around the uh, areas of the new soil that I've just placed in there. Now, which side do I want facing forward? Let's make sure, because this is the first side that's facing me is the forward facing side. Um, okay, I want some big uh, leaves at the back going towards the wall, so I think I'm going to actually plant it this way around because I can see a new shoot, a new leaf uh, stem coming up here at the front, and there are a couple more, and in the middle I can see like uh, a lot going on, um, and then the rest will be trained and trailing around the edge of the top of this room. I'm just, I'm going to let this thing go as much as it wants to, as much as it can, and when it gets too much, what's the problem? Just cut and propagate, and I'll show you that in another video. So right, to help to keep this into place, I need to put a little bit more soil around the edge, and then I can keep adding more perlite. I can actually see this plant is really tightly bound uh, with these flexible wires at the bottom. And I, I actually want to cut some of those off yeah, um, to give it a little bit of relief because it is a little bit tightly tight, tied in at the moment, it looks like for me. So I'll just get some more soil around so that I really can. Because uh, basically, it's really hard work doing all this with one hand all the time. I wish sometimes that I was an octopus so that I could hold with two hands while I'm trying to put the soil in with one hand. But that's not the way it is. Sometimes gardening can be hard. Okay, now it's standing up itself, so now I can actually use two hands to get some soil out of this bag. Soil that I'm getting all over the place. I think that's enough soil for now because we do need to have space to, uh, oh actually no, it's a little bit more, a little bit more, I thought that was solid, but it's not, no, a little bit more. Why does this soil just break up, it's so, it's so tied together, it's so stuck together that I have to break it up to be able to get a handful, it's quite annoying. I'm doing my best here. So, that part of the repotting is done and the plant looks absolutely wonderful and happy and straight, I hope. But, as I said, I want to replant 
um, some other flower plants around the bottom to give a little bit more colour. These, Neon Pothos. I have three of these and I'm going to be taking them apart from in the pots and placing them all around the edge to give a little bit of an extra contrast to this beautiful leaf and plant at the top. I think that's going to be wonderful together. And they're not too tightly bound because these are these are cuttings after all and as long as they've got some roots they'll be fine to be taken out of this and spread around so that I can get a nice even layer of them around the bottom of my plant. They're just beautiful. So at the front I want a nice big piece here. Nice big hole. I'll be able to see how many I need. If I don't need all of them, good. Then I have one to keep as just a separate plant on its own. So that was the first one in. Don't have to do too much with it. Oh. No, so I'm going to put around. I'm going to have to go around myself. This one's got some nice big leaves. Put that one in there. I'm just because the soil's soft, it's easy to just push the hole. Push the leaves down into the hole, bring some soil back around the edge and push a little bit down and then bam, you're done. No more trouble than that. And basically, it's about working your way around the, the whole pot, finding the ones that I, I think are the biggest and the bushiest and placing them around near the front and I'm going to have to place them all the way around but I'll put the smaller ones around the back. I just want a level layer of them all the way around. I just feel like that's better. So I have the final part. I just want to show you closer up what these beautiful neon pothos look like. It's a quite big one. It's beautiful with these plants cohabiting together in this pot in a wonderful array of two tones of colors and two types of foliage because that also gives interest if you're going to be planting plants around the bottom with something with a little bit of a different foliage from the one at the top. There's so many beautiful things to see at the same time, right? So, yes, I think I'll just put another little one here. Because I do, I would like it to um, start extending down at the front much quicker. And that's these plants repotted. Beautiful different look and texture to this pot. And you will see a picture of this later on, um, all together looking wonderful. I'll just do a little bit of tidying away and then I'll show you what this looks like. And there we have it. The Neon Pothos will hang down over the pot and I'll be able to take cuttings with time and I don't know, maybe I'll let it grow in between so I have kind of two types of plants growing on this vine. But this wonderful plant now is going to be able to root out, it was root bound, and extend itself and look wonderful and be really happy. This combination with these dark leaves and these burgundy stems and this lime and neon green colour going on at the bottom with the blue pot is just stunning. Another beautiful addition to our indoor terrace garden. I will be tying more of the top of this plant up. You can't see it on the video because it's so tall, but I will be taking uh, pictures later so that you can see it. But um, yeah, that was it for potting this plant. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and please remember to subscribe. Thank you very much for your interest. Please write your comments down below, anything you have to say, any ideas, any help, anything you want to know and it will be great to interact with you. So until the next Gardens and Crystals video, thank you very much and goodbye.